Good morning. My name is Solomon. And my name is Karina, and we're both 11th grade students at KSI. So we're here to talk about something that will probably excite all of you, if not the majority of you, and that is tests. <laughs> Judging from the nervous laughter I hear, that's definitely something you're all very, really excited about. <laughs> so let's start with a story, one you're all probably familiar with. So it's the day of the test, and your students are walking in. There's nervous energy in the air as they all review their notebooks and their worksheets, some of them cramming everything, even though you specifically told them not to. All of them are just hoping that the test is easy while praying for that sweet, sweet curve. <laughs> and yes, we can relate. We can definitely relate. But is this what assessment should look like? Sure, there are many ways to assess learning. You could replace the word test with graded discussion, group presentation, or even some dramatic interpretation of historical revolution. And we're not saying that the aforementioned tests aren't important, or that they should be eliminated entirely. Of course not. Tests are a fact of life. There's always going to be some kind of assessment or goal hanging over you. But with all this said, students become so focused on making the grade that they miss the point. Why they're being assessed in the first place. Instead of studying for true mastery over a subject, students cram facts into the short-term memory just so that they can barely clutch that A minor. Our lives as students become one test after another, and when we don't have what we're cramming for, we're studying for the SATs, scrutinizing raw score charts, and wondering if we should be changing our reach colleges just because of the 10-point difference in our score. But that's no one's fault. Not yours and not ours. It's just the system we were born into. But just because our system dictates this, does this mean that a uh, pen on paper assessment graded on a point scale, which then factored into a semester average, which is then factored into a year long average that determines the course of your life, is the only way to go? Uh, we believe the answer is no. Assessments don't just have to be tests or quizzes, they can extend to the real world. They can be interdisciplinary and they can be student driven. Last year, ASIJ tried something new. Students in its self-directed impact program participated in a TEDx event, a presentation of learning to the wider ASIJ community. Students presented a year's work of research to ASIJ faculty, parents, and students as a fitting end to their student survey project. At the same time, students like me organized and supported the event from all aspects, from tech to logistics to the guest experience. And as anyone who's ever organized an event can tell you, it wasn't easy. There were challenges and there were setbacks, but through these failures, we learned and grew and made the event a success. The experience of TEDx taught, that, taught us that learning is so much more than just a test. This goes past the score. and challenges students to be so familiar with their subject of study that they can talk about it for five, 10, or even 15 minutes in front of an audience. By taking, students, by taking students out of the standard testing paradigm and putting them out into the real world to share what they've done, it shows them a new perspective on learning and how they can better apply the acquired knowledge to real life. And through these new perspectives, we show them new ideas and new solutions to the problems that we face today. And I'm sure you know this as much as we do, but learning elevates us, giving everyone a chance to reach their goals. Our, uh, hmm. We owe students a chance to display their learning in ways past just the test. But this begs the question, how might we allow students to take ownership and guide the experience of their learning? Why is this even necessary? Student-led presentations of learning, or POLs, like the example of TEDx, allow students to display their learning in a way that transcends the test. As job applications and, the, uh, and college applications grow more and more competitive, we want to be able to communicate with all kinds of people about our ideas and our areas of knowledge, regardless of the setting. We want to be able to tell ourselves and our stories, and a POL builds these skills. Um, by taking students outside of this uh, testing paradigm, schools must include this as part of their uh, process. But the learning doesn't stop at the presenters. Students participating at work of TEDx last year, and without it, we would have never developed vital leadership skills that still help us today. To me, 
the most powerful thing about a POL isn't the student speakers or the interesting topics. It's how everything about it embodies student agency. Uh, students want to be challenged and given opportunities to shine outside of the classroom context. And when they do this, they can truly take ownership and grow. And behind the capable students are capable teachers. Teachers like all of you. Teachers who are willing to allow students to take hold of a project and exercise agency in a way that shows them the true nature of learning. Not just a task or a final project, but an interdisciplinary process that extends beyond the classroom and into the real world. Presentations of learning are one of the most powerful but underutilized tools in the educational toolset. They're a chance for students to grow, a chance for them to express their learning in a way that goes beyond the text into the real world. assessment is just a number or a score really keeps students from learning and growing to the fullest. Rethinking the way schools assess will ultimately help students reach their full potential.